Welcome to Train Signal. My name is Zach Monroe, and today we're going to talk about part two of our Certification 101 series, and we're going to take a look at CCNA Certification Breakdown. And we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Now basically with the CCNA, you have a couple different options when it comes to taking the exams to obtain your certification. First option I'm going to talk about is the two exam option. Now what you do here is you've got the first exam, which is the Cisco CSENT, also called the ICND-1, uh, and it's the 64822. You take that, you pass it, you move on to the ICND-2, and that's called the 64816. And essentially what you've done is obtained your CCNA. Also, when you pass that first exam, you obtain your CSENT certification. So you have a CSENT and a CCNA, even though the CSENT is part of the CCNA. That's a little bit confusing, but basically you have both certifications. Now, why would anybody take two exams if they could, if they had the option to take one? Well, I'm going to tell you. I, I recommend the two exam option if you're someone that's new to networking. If if this if you you know you need to work on the basics of networking, I, I definitely recommend going with two exams because you can focus on the basics on the first exam, the ICND-1, then you can move on to the more advanced topics that you're going to find on the ICND-2, so you can kind of focus your energy on that and, and build on the basics that you've learned for the first exam, whereas if we move down to the one exam option, it's going to cover everything from the basics to the advanced topics in CCNA, and the, the, this CCNA exam is the 64802. It's one exam, you pass it, you get your CCNA, but it covers everything. Now, one other question that you may ask is, well, if I take the 64802, do I get a CSENT certification? No, you don't. So is it better to take the two exam option, get a CSENT and a CCNA? Well, I I'm here to tell you no. Okay, either way is fine. If you don't obtain your CSENT certification by doing the two exams, that's no problem. And you can see there, no CSENT, no problem. Basically, all any employer, customer, uh, anybody that would be interested, all they want to know is that you did obtain the CCNA. The CSENT really is secondary to that. I mean, it's going to be able, it's going to be something you're, you're going to be able to put down. But anybody that knows about it is going to know. Look, you obtained your CCNA, and that's all that matters. Now, going back to the one exam option here, just the 64802. That's some, this is something I would consider if you're a little bit more experienced in networking. Maybe you've worked with Cisco routers a little bit and you just haven't been certified. Uh, because this is something where you, you know, probably know the basics and you're able to focus on more advanced topics and the basics aren't going to trip you up in this, in this one exam. So that, that's kind of the difference between the two exams and those are my recommendations for which option you should take based on your experience. I want to move on to the to the next point here. Experience has a lot to do with it. If you have no experience, then you're going to need to study. And even if you do have some experience, you're, you're going to need to study for the CCNA exam because there's just too much information, too much terminology that you probably don't use on a daily basis, even if you are working with Cisco routers and, and a Cisco network. And that's why I recommend going with Train Signals, uh, CSENT course, ICND2 course, or CCNA course. We've broken it up into three courses and as you as you can see here and I just want to go out to the website real quick and you can see this is our that's the link to our CCNA page and this is our CCNA course and it's for our 64802 exam. You're going to get a transcender practice exam with that and you're going to get all these high res AVI files, iPod files and PDF instructors notes. And if you want to take a look here, say you're not sure if you want to focus on the CCNA and you want to do the two exam option, you're going to get the CSENT and the ICND2 courses in the CCNA package, but maybe you just want to focus on the CSENT. You can get that on its on its own. Uh, maybe you already have your CSENT and you want to get to the ICND2, but obviously it covers more advanced topics and you want to do some studying with that. You can get the ICND2 on its own as well. So I just want to point that out and recommend train signal as the as the you know the best study option for you out there so once you get done you can copy this link take a look at the link and uh, 
you know, take a look at the course offering out there and make the decision for yourself. Now, moving on to the details of this exam, and this is all all information you can get on the Cisco website, cisco.com, but I wanted to put this in here to, to point some things out. Now, the CCNA exam, the 64802, that's just the one exam, you're looking at between 50 and 60 questions, and it's going to you, you're going to have 90 minutes to complete it. Um, that, now, for the ICND one, same situation, 50 to 60 questions, 90 minutes to complete it. Now, the ICND two, 45 to 55 questions, 75 minutes to complete it. And the reason I point, the reason I want to point this out is, you take a look here, and you, if we go back and you actually take a look at the Train Signal website, the CCNA course has 20 over 29 hours of course material on it. That's a, that's a lot of information, and that course is based directly off the exam objectives from Cisco, okay, for the CCNA exam. So that's a ton of information, and you're looking at 50 to 60 questions. Well, what's that tell you? Well, they're taking a very small sample of a lot of information. So my suggestion to you is be over-prepared for these exams. If even if you're focusing on doing the two exams and you're doing the one at a time here, be absolutely over prepared for these exams because they're going to ask you questions that you you never thought would be asked if you didn't study for it. If you study and you're over prepared for it, and I, and I know I've said that a couple times here, but I, it's crucial that that if you take one thing out of this, that you take that because you know it's a very small sample size of a lot of information so you want to be able to perform when it comes time to actually take the exam so that's that's the reason I put this slide in here just wanted wanted to convey that to you now here's a big question a lot of people ask what kind of job can I get with my CCNA well I, I'm gonna tell you there are a lot of good jobs out there for a CCNA and one thing I want to point out is if you've got no experience, no certifications, and you just go and get your CCNA, you may have a little bit of a hard time finding a job for a CCNA because most, uh, you know, most companies that are hiring somebody for a position are going to say, you know, CCNA required, A plus required, uh, network plus, you know, probably not, but probably not network plus if you got CCNA, but you get my meaning. It's going to be more than just the CCNA that's going to be required to get the job. So you're, you're talking about type of positions, entry-level Cisco network admin. Uh, you know, I put entry-level here because it, it, it really is, it, it's, a, it's a starting point for a CCNA. But with this network admin, uh, and also Cisco network designer, you're going to actually design the physical network and the logical network. With With these, you know, I guarantee you, if a company is advertising for these positions, you're going to need to have an A plus because you're going to need to show that you can work with hardware. You're going to need your CCNA, and you may need to be working towards your CCMP. Uh, the CCNA is a great certification, and it is going to open a lot of doors for you at the entry level. But if you really want to do something with with that uh, knowledge that you've taken just realize that the CCNA is a prerequisite to CCMP certification. And I know that gets a little bit out of out of bounds of what this video is about, but you do your CCNA and you pass that, you obtain that certification, and your next step is the CCMP certification. There's four exams. Uh, it's, it's pretty detailed, pretty complicated certification. Uh, but it's well worth it. I want to point this out. The average salary for a CCMP, according to About.com, this year, $84,161. That's a, that's a fantastic salary. Um, and it comes from, you know, you get your CCNA, and, and you use that as a stepping stone to get your CCMP and move into a position like this. And again, I just want to point out, too, you can study for your CCMP at Train Signal as well. And I just want to go there and take a look at that before we finish up. I'm going to pull this up here. And we're looking at this. Here's our, here's our Cisco training. I'll click on that. And I'm going to pull that down and blow this up a little bit. 
here's our Cisco training. This is our Cisco training videos. So like I said, here's the CCNA, CSENT, ICND2. Here is our CCMP training videos. And here's the four, here's the four courses here. And now here's the CCMP training package. We've actually packaged those together and uh, you know, lowered the price a little bit for you so you can, so you can do that. So again, you know, my recommendation to you work towards that CCNA, get that CCNA, get that job that you've been, that you've been working for and go get your CCMP because it's going to pay dividends in the long run. I appreciate you being with me here today. My name's Zach Monroe. This was uh, CCNA certification breakdown from train signal. Thanks so much.